Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agadji. Welcome to the 30th of uh, September. Happy New Month to you. Yeah, happy New Month to you <laughs> too. Uh, we've not crossed paths since the whole of this month. And uh, it's good. What do you mean the whole of this month? Yes, this is the third month. day of this month. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things can happen in three days. The whole of this month. Mm -hmm. You know how many people have been born now how many people have died also how many oh, people true. have achieved something how many people are just you know i mean 24 hours has been a long time so, so there are some people whose testimony in these three days will will be like a testimony that should have been for 10 years so mm. three days is a very very in fact it's the time it took <laughs> but jesus you're exaggerating christ. it's oh, the time God. it took jesus christ to wow. wake up from the dead wow. so you see three days is a, a, quite a number <laughs> So. Oh yes, it's the 3rd of September 2024, a beautiful Tuesday morning. By the morning. way, I got the date right today. Oh yes, you did. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> My flower. All right, we'll be looking at several hot topics that we'll be discussing much later in the show, one of which says petrol scarcity is set to worsen as NNPCL admits $6 billion debt. Another says police declare Britain a Nigerian wanted for attempting to overthrow Tinubu much later in the show. We'll also be taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our headlines this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Technology is like art. Is a so well, technology like art is a soaring exercise of the human imagination, and that is by Daniel Bell. Um, he's a, was an American sociologist, writer, and editor. And he says this morning, technology like art is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. Everything comes from our imagination. Yeah. So whatever you think is development, whatever, whatever you think is uh, civilization, whatever you mm -hmm. think is an improvement of what we used to be is a product of imagination so mm -hmm. put your mind to, to use yeah. this i mean everything that we do right now our phones in fact let's not go to technology every single thing this mug someone created it mm -hmm. from the human imagination the clothes we're putting on mm -hmm. someone created it so i think at the end of the day it's just putting your mind to work mm -hmm. saying i want to be able to create something mm -hmm. and now technology obviously has helped everybody in the world we can speak to each other as often as we want to online like in the old times where you have to write letters and the letters probably would not even get to you till three months you have to go and wait at the post office buy the stamps i mean i remember even buying stamps as well i'm not that old but <laughs> <laughs> but i remember buying stamps um before we had phones to be able to to call but now uh, look at how the world has changed you cannot just call you can even see the person you can do a video call you can upload pictures before pictures had to be in you know the um, analog format mm -hmm. now you have digital pictures and i remember when they started saying digital it was like oh my god this is amazing this is something new um you have to get a digital camera take a picture and in two minutes it's out but now with my phone i can take a picture and you're seeing it if i want to print it it's totally different. Like technology has changed the game. And guess what? It started from just one man's thinking. It started from just that human imagination and look at where we are now. Yeah, but I'm just imagining, <laughs> I'm imagining well, this imagination we're mm -hmm. talking about. If 400 years ago, someone was able to invent telephone, 
uh, was able to invent uh, the kind of phones that we have now, he probably would have been burnt at stake. Mm. You know, like, say, what are you doing? This, this is not possible. Are you God? This and that. You are, you're um, a witch. So, yes. Yeah, so when people imagine things, a, a very critical factor that makes us develop more than we are now is the acceptability mm. of the fact that a lot of things are possible. So if you cannot imagine, the people who are imagining, you need, they need your support to yeah. make sure that this thing comes to fruition. We didn't imagine that we could fly like the birds. We didn't imagine that we could talk to someone as far as maybe in America, maybe in, the, in, the, um, in Germany or something, just by a click of the button. We didn't imagine that we could even drive a car mm -hmm. a long time ago. But now we're doing all those things. And I, we can just imagine how the next 50 years is going to be. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I mean, I remember seeing movies. You know when you see all these sci-fi movies mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my God, is this what the world is going to be like? People are going to space. And come on now, we're already talking about space. You're already doing so many things let, that seem so far away in the future. When I was quite young, I wanted to be a, an electronics, electrical electronics e engineer. engineer. That is because I watched a movie they called it Green Eyes in the early 80s. Mm. The man just went to his door, looked at the camera, and just said his name, Meno yeah. Sebastiano Argenti. The, the <laughs> still was, I still remember. It was the one that was, oh, it was so inspiring. I wanted to do that course so that I could do something like, like that. that. But in, in those days, we were just looking at it like, okay, this is just fiction. Mm. We don't know how it was. But look that. at it today. But, but now, it's, it's it's very common. Mm -hmm. Anybody can just have a, a smart door like that, that you talk to the door, you clap your hands and the lights come on. The lights on. come on, you yeah. You talk to Siri, uh, put on the... Mm -hmm. put on the Alexa, uh, yeah. Alexa, yeah. Mm -hmm. Put on the television and mm -hmm. the radio and all. Mm -hmm. These are things that we thought could not happen. Yeah. But they're happening now. Voice control is happening now. And it's, it's, just, it's just amazing that technology can actually inspire people. Mm -hmm. So it inspires you to do even more. Because look at you now, saying as a young boy, you watch that and you're like, I want to, I want to study this. So you don't even know how many people um, technology has inspired and now they want to create something even more. It's like a ripple effect. So someone has created something, another person runs with it and say, I want to create something even better and it just keeps getting better over time. But let me encourage you, in case you cannot imagine the things that will uh, become the technology that we'll use and everything, mm -hmm. just put your mind to use. Mm -hmm. Because as I am, when I go into the kitchen, deciding what to cook is a problem. But there are chefs that But there are that people perfectly. who will just think about, just sit down and they decide what... They, that decision is an imagination that will you will put to use and people of your family will mm -hmm. enjoy it and mm -hmm. all that. So it doesn't have to be... And you can even make a business out of yeah, it. You know, it doesn't have to be that you'll, you'll develop a phone, you develop mm -hmm. a flying machine, or an flying app. saucer. Not everybody or has to no, be into not everybody tech. can do that. But mm -hmm. if you put your mind to, to, to use, mm -hmm. you can imagine a lot of things and you can create a lot of things, mm -hmm. whether it is food, whether it is... Uh, Whatever it could it be is. anything, and, could be and anything. because we need everything, like we need the food, we need the clothes, we need the electricity, you know, just anywhere you know you can function properly. I think that's what you should be looking at. Something that you're passionate about, something that you know you can do well. If you put your hands to work and you put your brain to use, mm -hmm. you'd use that properly, utilize it, and you would just be able to change the world in with the little thing that you have yeah. in your hand. So it doesn't have to be technology. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be something that seems so fanciful mm -hmm. and glamorous. Um, but it, it could just be something simple. It could be creating a toilet cleaner. Good soup for me to eat. Good soup. That's all. Yeah, go. <laughs> All right, let's move over to our top trending stories. This first one says, court remand and bad governance protesters in Kuje Suleja prison. On Monday, Justice Emeka Winte of the Federal High Court in Abuja remanded 10 and bad governance protesters with nine males sent to Kuje prison and one female to Suleja prison. The trial and bill ruling are set for September 11. The protesters who pleaded not guilty face six charges, including alleged treason, conspiracy, and intent to destabilize Nigeria. They are accused of attacking police officers, burning police stations, and inciting mutiny. 
Amnesty International and Nigeria condemned the trials, labeling them as unjust attempts to punish peaceful dissenters. They called for immediate release of all detained protesters, criticizing the government's focus on punishing protesters rather than investigating the deaths of demonstrators. The hashtag and bad governors protests held from August 1 to 10 were sparked by economic hardships, including inflation, fuel subsidy removal, and forex unification. The protests turned violent in several states with reports of looting and deaths, although the police denied involvement in the killings. It's not an issue of protest. It's an issue of inciting mutiny. Mutiny means trying to change government by force, not by constitutional means. So that is the, the you know, inciting disaffection to, to the government. So where a person, you know, incite other people, you know, to riot, you know, in order to change the system by force, is what we call mutiny. And, you know, in our laws, it is treason. So that is why we are, we are, they have been arraigned today for treason, inciting mutiny, inciting disaffection, you know, rioting, and uh, causing so much destruction in the country. You know, that is why we have to, be, as Nigerians, you know, we have to be guided before we take action. Because a person will come with an ulterior motive. Like the British citizen, that is uh, Andrew Martin Wine, aka Andrew Pochi. You know, he came with uh, his, uh, you know, his ideas. You will discover that he has brought books, revolutionary books. They have been arraigned today, and they have pleaded no guilty. And also, although. Uh, the court has adjourned the matter for the ruling because we moved their bail application. And this is the only thing that we will do. And we have moved their bail application. And also the court has already adjourned the matter to 11 of this month for ruling. I think that's the position. This is media trial and this is uh, media publicity. And um, for us, very simple. We are happy that finally protesters have been charged. Unfortunately, instead of charging them, for protest, the Tinubu government has charged them for terrorism. What an irony of some sort. When Bilo Tuji and other terrorists and bandits are in, in, uh, on TikTok having fun and abducting people. And these people were picked from different states. You pick somebody from Maraba, pick somebody from uh, Wuse, somebody from Kadna, somebody from uh, Tar uh, Kando, people that have never met before in their lives. People that have never had any cause of interaction together before and chat them together for the same offense. This is funny. But we'll get it. Just like the man rightly said, it's funny. I mean, people from different states, how do you know that they were trying to, um, you know, incite these things that they're being accused and we were talking about it i think two weeks ago that some of them do not even have legal representatives um i know that uh, it's a demonstration it was supposed to be a peaceful demonstration but at the end of the day why are we not looking at the root cause of the matter if we're saying people went out into the streets to protest why did they go out to protest it's because of the hardship in the country right now but then you're moving to something else and trying to i feel like it's scapegoating you're trying to make an example of them um, so that others might just be scared to not go out to protest but if truly you investigate and maybe they were guilty of this fine i think they should be charged but a proper investigation should be done and not trying to scapegoat some people i think they're just trying to gag everybody they're trying to intimidate everybody mm -hmm. they have, they've talked about a foreigner that came with books and all that uh, well f investigate and see that he's really guilty and mm -hmm. let him go for it but, but what kind of law um, allows, for instance, people who go to the church to pray, mm. uh, carrying flags of countries that they want to go to, mm -hmm. because they do that a lot. Mm -hmm. what, what law also covers the people who establish schools in Nigeria and fly the flags of other countries? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what, what is the difference between that and someone who is trying to express the fact that I would rather be in a country that is like this and carries them. I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. not saying it is right, but I'm yeah. not justifying it and all that. But if you want to judge this case, I think 
they're just like you said scapegoating they mm -hmm. need a fall guy that they can point to and say that we are going to deal with you mm -hmm. if you do this some of these people their relatives may not even know th that they are in prison because mm -hmm. they are hustlers somewhere Mm -hmm. trying to just make ends meet and that they just the entered picture. the protest because they know they're hungry. Mm -hmm. Who in the first place give the people the excuse to exploit the situation? Because if you don't give me that excuse, then I cannot do anything. If, if I'm finding food to eat, I'm doing everything. If I go to the street to protest, there are people who will shout me down because yeah. everything is rosy mm -hmm. but now nobody's talking about it they keep telling us every day even was it yesterday or so that the policies of this government are going to yield positive results when, when? <laughs> yes, that's the question everybody has been asking when? this is more than a year yeah. it is getting to two years and to be frank and already, like, i'm half so half surprised that we survived to this point what is that Ten thousand meant something two years ago even when we saw that the Buhari government was terrible, but 10,000 meant something uh, two years ago. Now, take 10,000 to the want? market. No, it, you can't even afford you it. Can't, you can't Anything. afford it. Now we're hearing that uh, fuel might become like 1,400 1, per liter. Who can afford that? Then there will be no, no, no time for notice to say that, okay, uh, in so-so days or in so-so weeks, we are mm. going to protest and all that. It might just come spontaneously, yeah, it would just and be who a knows if we can, we, can, we can contain that. I think the government is leaving the things that they're supposed to look at and f chasing clouds. Yeah, That's I just what I can you. say. I agree with you. It's a terrible thing. Do you know what treason is? You want to topple a government, you want, you're like a coup or something. Mm -hmm. That is what people who went to the street to say that they are hungry are being accused of. Off. It's a terrible quite, thing. It's quite unfortunate. It's a terrible thing. The ripple effect, we might not be able to contain it, but I hope it never gets there and they, they do the needful. Yeah. Okay, Nigeria to spend 54.9% income on food in the next six months. That's according to the CBN. Uh, they said that Nigerian households are expected to spend 54.9% of their income on uh, food over the next six months due to rising inflation, uh, which currently stands at 33.4%. 0% with food inflation exceeding 40%. The CBN's household expectation survey reveals that Nigerians plan to cut spending on non-essential items and focus on necessities like food, education and transportation. Many Nigerians are unlikely to invest in big ticket items to save, with most expected to draw down on savings or incur debt due to uh, financial pressures. Despite ongoing economic challenges, there is some optimism that the Naira may appreciate, may is a operative word here, <laughs> uh, by January 2025. Although inflation, borrowing rates and unemployment are expected to continue rising. So everything I make in a month, over half, September, is going on October, just October, November, December, January, then, that's five months. Okay, and then um, after it goes on food, what money will I have to save for my rent? I'm not even talking about transportation that, you know, I used to and fro to the office. Um, if I have kids, of course, I have to, you know, send them to school. So if over half of my income is going to be going on food, that means as of right now, we've not seen anything. Who There's going you, to be shaking from Max. Uh, That's going to come. Who told you is half of the income? Everything is going to food. Okay, let's, let's use the minimum wage of 70000 yeah. And I tell you, people are still not earning up to 70000 mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the civil service and ask them how much they're earning, a lot of them are there because of their retirement, because of the security that yeah. when they retire, they'll be getting something. Otherwise, there's nothing to write home about. A lot of people be above... above uh, level 10 are earning less than a hundred thousand in the civil wow. service let them let them prove me wrong but you know if you're earning seventy thousand for instance a bag of gary is how much how much right. do you buy oil how much do you buy so a household an average household we should be like five three children and wife and, and and father how much are they earning let's say the mother and the father are earning minimum wage of seventy thousand that is a hundred and forty thousand how many bags of rice can they eat? Can, in they a, even afford can they afford it? Because their salary combined is almost like just one bag of rice. Do you need and to buy tomatoes? You need to buy a fish. You need to buy meat. You need to buy all the things that you're going to cook with that. And then you're saying 54 point something percent? I went to the market the other day because I like to do my shopping in bulk. I cannot even tell you how much I had to spend in the market. Like, 
I kept shouting. And I live alone. Like, it's just for me. Because before you buy toiletries, before you buy food, before you pay for your electricity, I was just like, oh my God. What is going on? Like, so how imagine that here? You're, you're just working, even if you're earning, let's say, 300000 or 400000 And there is no side hustle. Imagine how you will go to the market and expect yourself to survive. It is not enough. Even to buy water is a problem, right? Water, a pack of water now is about 4,000 naira. And you're saying 54 point something so, percent. And of course, that pack, you're going to finish it in, let's say... It's 100 and something. Except Nigerians are being encouraged to, to cut corners. Nigerians are being encouraged to, uh, to look elsewhere for what they're going to do. Yeah. So if you are a faithful servant, you're working somewhere, and you don't have a side hustle so that you don't get distracted, Nigeria is telling you that you have to do something yeah, else. You even, to, if you have to, if, even if you have to work here, you have to make sure that there are some things that you do they like we call magu magu mm, so that you can get extra money it's not sometimes. right yeah and because th this is what drives people into corruption if you look at it um i might be working here and i'm just like oh is there is there a loophole that i can just use to make more money mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be because that. i have to pay fees yes i have to transport myself i have to I have look to buy good. fuel ha exactly you still even have to take care of your skin of yourself skin care it's, there's it's, it's a lot and i'm just wondering what their plan is because if you are already telling us that about 54.9 percent is going to go on food alone then what are we going to do? That means whatever we've seen right now is right not now, the compared Naira, to... The Naira is 1,000, is it 535 or 635? And they're telling us that in five months, the Naira may appreciate, may. which means <laughs> it may also not appreciate. And then, of course, with time. fuel getting worse now, the scarcity and stuff, and then in, in, the increase in the price, it's, it's just a lot. I mean, Nigerians, kudos to you guys. <laughs> Are you a Chadian? <laughs> Kudos to all of us. I mean, we're, we're pulling through. Oh, we're, we're, just, we're just resilient people that, I don't know. I don't know how we're doing it. If someone asked me, in fact, I went out the other day and someone was like, um, how are you doing? I'll say, okay, no, say something interesting about yourself. And I'm like, I'm surviving. That's the something That's interesting all. about That's me. Because I, I cannot believe I'm here as a Nigerian, living in Nigeria. And I'm still surviving. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. Let's just take our final top trending story. Well, this one says Dangote Petrol ready for rollout. The Dangote Petroleum Refinery is set to begin selling premium motor spirit PMS following a successful test run. Currently, only the Nigerian National Petroleum Company and Limited NNPCL will be authorized to sell the fuel from the refinery. The refinery previously faced challenges, including a crude shortage and a dispute with the Nigerian midstream and downstream regulatory authority over substandard diesel. Dangote Group is pushing for local refineries to buy crude directly from Nigerian producers instead of through international middlemen. Well, finally, Dangote Refinery is ready, I hope. It really rolls out because even with Dangote Refinery, I mean, they had to move the date a couple of times. So I don't know what's going to happen, whether this scarcity is going to be reduced. I think the, the, the Dangote will, will roll out the, whatever they have promised they will roll out. Mm. But uh, as they're rolling out, will they roll down the Naira? Will they roll down the cost of uh, fuel? Because mm -hmm. it is possible that there will be fuel available, but there will be... More expensive. Uh, yeah, yeah this, the fuel will be very expensive, at least as expensive as it is now, which means there will be no difference at all. Hmm. <laughs> oh well, let's go on a short break. Let's look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs> 